Today on Nerd Out, Captain Picard, Sour Skittles, and Macaulay Culkins wins Miss America. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano, we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. As you know, we're talking about this really interesting title that's uh, so that we tweak the algorithms for YouTubes, but let's go ahead and get into it. So today we're talking about these things. So what we're really talking about is, you know, what's been happening over the last few days with uh, testing and bugs and are we ready to upgrade for Basil or are we not? Um, so this is kind of my rundown of what happened. Charles Hoskinson asked SPOs to upgrade to the latest uh, 1.35.3 release. I was personally waiting on the new test nets to spin up to run my checks before upgrading, and they weren't ready. We weren't making blocks yet. So what happened is I reacted, and I kind of started a Twitter fight, and for that, I want to personally apologize. I'm sorry for doing that. There were better channels for me to communicate through that existed. Uh, we were kind of talking past each other on Twitter. There were actually two bugs, not one. Um, and so then what happened is IOG team, they did an SBO call. They went above and beyond. The IOG team was great. Um, we talked it out, got a plan together. The Twitter fight was kind of getting worse. So that's when I agreed to go on uh, Crypto Capital Venture with Dan to kind of explain my side of things. Um, I personally did approve Dan's video title. Crypto journalism is what it is. You, you've got to, you know, do sensational titles to have the algorithm work. Um, you know, the algorithms decide what, what's required, and in crypto journalism, sensationalism is required. Dan's family needs to eat too. So I was like, sure, whatever, Dan, let's, let's go for it. Um, so with that, we want everybody to watch this video. So that's why we have to take this slide and make sure that everybody watches it. So we'll do the Captain Picard. Oh, left hand Captain Picard. Oh, Sour Skittles. Oh, and Macaulay Culkin wins Miss America. Okay, back to our regular scheduled program. So what we what happened after that? The setup. So Ben O'Hanlon, he's he's a hero of the SPO community. He immediately saw the community split, organized an SPO call. Totally went above and beyond. Thank you, Ben. So on the, the SPO call, the IOG team, um, there was many people on the call for on the IOG side. They listened very carefully to our concerns. Um, Sam Leathers, who works in DevOps there, he agreed to spin up a special test net on Friday that would meet our testing goals as the current two test nets weren't able to accommodate it. We weren't making blocks there uh, soon enough to be able to do the testing we wanted for uh, to test uh, the bug we wanted to test, or the, the main bug. So let's let's talk about the bugs. There was two bugs. So there was a bug concerning the SPOs. This one was very recent. It was only fixed 20 days ago. It was found on mainnet. Uh, a bunch of good SPOs lost blocks over it because they had upgraded early and were kind of testing on mainnet. Um, it was in every release, you know, 35.0, 35.1, 35.2, and it was finally just patched in 35.3. So this is why I kind of reacted the way I did to, oh, we're not ready for you know, we haven't, haven't really had time to really check out 35.3 yet. Um, so, yeah, this is the release we said wasn't fully tested because on the SPO side, we hadn't tested it yet. They had tested it on the IOG side. Um, there was also a second bug that was a security issue related to SECP 256K1 library integration. This is a I, I believe a feature that's going in to support some smart contract stuff. It wasn't needed. Uh, for the Vassal hard fork. It was discovered in an audit at IOG. It was kept private for obvious reasons, for security reasons, until it was discussed in a video um, by Charles. And this is kind of when I realized, hey, maybe we're kind of talking past each other. Maybe we're discussing two different 
bug. So this bug was fixed, I believe, very earlier. So it was understandable that Charles thought, hey, no more testing is needed. You know, we've been running without this bug for a very long time and it's gone through a ton of testing, which is which is true. Um, I don't know any more details about that one um, because again, it's it's private for security reasons. Um, so the breaking of the test net, we had a misunderstanding. So either this bug, the the security bug, or the bug that was found 20 days ago could have been the one that potentially uh, broke the existing test net. Um, so that's why there was kind of a, a misunderstanding there. Both of those bugs had they occurred. We don't. I don't know which particular one at this point caused the actual break. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, either one of those could have been been the one. And hopefully, maybe we, maybe we can find a way to rescue the existing test net in the future. So that's the tale of two bugs. So the plan: How are we going to go about testing this this bug? So the idea. Um, this is the plan I had had in my head and then I had to formalize it and because of the publicity around this we we got a lot more people involved um, with the testing so originally this was just something I was going to do on my own but it was it was better for visibility sake to get much more people involved so the idea was every stakeful operator that was testing would spin up two relays two block producers one pair would run the old version 134.1 and the other pair would run 135.3 the pools would then share a VRF key, and that would cause them to, every time they make a block, they would produce a slot battle and a fork of the network. Now, normally this isn't a problem. They would fork, and then one gets chosen over the other based on, um, you know, based on the, the leader VRF value that gets generated, which other, everyone has the lower value, gets, gets chosen. Um, but if the bug was reproducible, then what we would see with this setup is we would see the network cleanly fork into two different paths. You know, the the 34.1 fork and the 35.3 fork, assuming it still had the bug, it would go on its own path. And we would see probably several blocks in a row before, you know, one chain or the other would eventually, well, the 134.1 chain would probably eventually uh, went out but you never know it it might not have so that's kind of what we were setting up to make sure that we would be able to notice if there was a problem um, the other thing we were going to do is run a passive relay on 135.2 which was known to contain the bug so this was kind of the attack node that we were going to use to try and get this bad transaction um, that hurt testnet well potentially could have been this one or the, the SECP bug, uh, trying to get this one onto the network with uh, these two other node versions involved. So yeah, the, the idea was to craft a smart contract transaction with a bad min fee using 135.2 as the attack node. And then we were going to submit this transaction or attempt to submit this transaction to both 34.1 and 35.3 and here, if it's successful, we expected to it reject this with a fee to low error. Uh, then we also were going to submit it on the attack node itself, the 35.2, and we expected this to accept the transaction, which we've then verified that we have reproduced the bug. Um, and then also we wanted to make sure that once submitted, that this that this node is not able to propagate that transaction to the other nodes in the system. So make sure that the nodes that are either the old version or the new patched version do not accept this transaction. And then also we did other ad hoc tests that touch similar areas of the code, but not this exact bug. So like running all the different transactions from Shelley era, Allegra, and Mary eras with all their different fee structures and make sure that you know, all the nodes accepted them, they succeeded, everything propagates fine. Um, so that's kind of just like a, a golden test, I guess. Make sure everything, everything else is, is fine and the patch didn't break something else. Um, so yeah, then if no errors occur, what we should see is both block producers 
winning approximately 50% of the ongoing slot battles. So what was the result of this? We confirmed success by many stake pool operators. Uh, there are still some testing this today. We're going to give them a little more time to test before we fork this network. Um, so yeah, the, the idea when you run a test is you don't want just one person running the test and confirming it because there could be some confirmation bias. It's the same reason we don't just want the IOG team and their QA team doing all the testing. We also want community testing as well. And so then the final step is we're going to ride through the Vassal hard fork on this network, which Sam has said should happen on Monday. This is a little bit of a formality, but it's kind of an important box to, to check since this will be the first public test net to cross Basil on this new node version with all of this new patched code. Um, but yeah, we, we don't anticipate anything bad happening there. Everything should be successful. So after the successful hard fork on Monday, I will personally begin upgrading my mainnet nodes to 35.3 and I'll be encouraging others to do the same based on these results. And also hopefully this new cool, we're calling it YOLO net, uh, we keep it around for the future as I believe this type of testing where we test cross node versioning is very useful. So in the past it's been just on the old test net, they say everybody upgrade and everybody upgrades and then a few days later we fork the network and we just test crossing the hard fork. But really, we need to test this period where we haven't yet hard forked, but there's multiple versions of the node running on, on the mainnet, and that's something we don't want to have to test out on mainnet. It's better to have this YOLO net uh, for future releases. So I think even though you know everything is good, everything is beautiful, I, I think we're going to be great for, for Vazel. It's still good to have this network kind of stick around. Um, it's up to IOG whether this sticks around, but I've, I've formally requested that we, we let it stay around if we can. So I want to give a number of shout outs to all who helped in this process. Uh, first shout out is Federico from Stay Cool. He was the, the individual who originally found the bug on mainnet. Um, he also worked with other pool operators to get it attention and help diagnose it. If you want to support him, you can stake to the pool cool. Uh, Martin Lang and Mike Fullman, they took the ball and ran with it. So Martin is a Cardano ambassador. Uh, Mike is the developer of Pool Tool. So they worked with Federico. They filed, uh, Martin filed the bug report and documented the heck out of the issue until it could be diagnosed by the people at IOG. If you want to support Martin, stake to Atata or Atata2. If you want to support Mike, stake to Love Pool. Uh, the Ancient Kraken, aka Quinn Parkinson. Quinn is the individual who crafted the attack smart contract transaction that we used for testing. If you want to stake to him, uh, he runs the Logic Pool. Um, he's also a really, really damn good smart contract developer. So if you need small little smart contracts, he can probably help you out with that. Uh, Conrad from Bladepool, he was an early tester. He's he's always jumping in to help out the community on various projects. Um, I believe he's a Sunday swap scooper as well. He's, he's always, he's in everything. Um, so if you want to support him and all he's doing to help the network is take the Bladepool, support Conrad. Holger, Holger Hartstock, he's, he was an early tester. He's always helping out the community. He's the tech lead at Liquid Finance. He's active in too many charitable organizations around Cardano ecosystem to name, uh, helping kids in Africa, all, all kinds of really cool stuff. Um, his pool is Cardano24 and the pool ticker is called ADA. Very simple if you wanna stake to his pool to support Hol Holger. I guess that's how he pronounces it. He's German. Holger, not Holger. Uh, Adam Dean. Adam helped us with testing a really, really old node version. So he spun up a bunch of the oldest nodes that were still Alonzo compatible. Uh, he is the creator of BuffyBot. He also ran the Buffy stake pool for a while. If you uh, that, that pool is now retired, so if you want to support Adam, buy NFTs. There's a decent chance he and his Buffy bot minted them. 
Uh, also, shout out to Jared Cordwan. I don't know if I said that right, from IOG. He gave us a direction for building the attack transaction. And then he confirmed that the transaction that Quinn had built correctly reproduced the bug in question. Um, in the past, he also has spent two hours of his day on a video call with me to help me understand how to do Prouse consensus and how the Haskell code worked so that I could implement it in the Rust code in CNCLI. And it's why when we move to Babbage, everybody will have leader logs. So thank you, Jared, for that. If you want to support Jared, tell Charles to give him a raise. Also, shout out to Charles Hoskinson. He provides a vision for the future we all want to be a part of. He invites others to join in the mission of making it happen. He is flagrantly transparent and he is not afraid to speak his mind and he issues gut checks to people where appropriate. So shout out to you, Charles. And there's others that have tested. I have probably forgotten some people. If I missed you, I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm going on very little sleep the past few days. I'm emotionally exhausted. Um, please retweet this video. Give yourself a shout out. Um, even if you participate in, in testing this days after you see this, this video, all the information is on the IOG Discord and the SPO public testnet channel if you want to give it a test yourself. Um, thank you, everybody, and with that, nerd out.